Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today's article that we're gonna talk about and see if we agree or we disagree, uh -huh. it says, will future generations ever be able to afford a home? Here's the truth. I'm not saying that, the article's saying that. The article. The article's saying that. So, everything, a lot of things are unaffordable now, you know, and a lot of people are gonna say, well, this is like a broken record. Of course it's unaffordable, but, and not in all areas and there's things you could do you know yeah maybe that house is unaffordable but maybe that townhouse or that condo is affordable could because be. of the step stone yeah you know, stepping stone yeah let's read this article before we already come to the term you know yeah already, right well pull judgment on it and let's see what we think and let's see what you guys think also in the meantime, do me a favor, consider subscribing. It's really, really appreciated. It really helps out the channel. So Bill, start us off. All right. <clears throat> Questions about future home ownership of viability have become increasingly desperate asks amongst young people. The dream of owning a home continues to as important feature of young American psyches, but viable paths to becoming a homeowner seem to be growing ever narrower. First time buyer age has risen once again to an average of 36 years old, according to the National Association of Realtors, continuing to shift this much desired transition farther out for so many. I didn't, first of all, I didn't realize it was 36 years Neither old. Neither did I. It's interesting. Okay. I thought maybe early 30s. You know, I think when I bought my first house, I was in my 20s. Right. Me too. You know, so. But a lot of young people, some young people actually believe that I'll never be able to afford a house unless my parents give it to me or whatever. Yeah, okay. I'm telling you, a lot of them gave up on buying a house because that's how they feel. They feel like they could never I afford it. I won't get it. on my soapbox. But they, they do, they feel, yeah, like they, they, right. they feel like, oh, I'm just gonna be a renter Look, the rest of my life. Look, if that's what you think, don't be, don't, don't, I just don't like hearing a defeatist attitude. Gotta keep pushing forward, that's all I gotta say. You're young. Like, you know what I mean? You're in your 20s, for God's sakes. You got your whole life ahead of you. But, but prices are up. Interest rates remain astronomically high, for one thing, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Further, housing inventory is also muted. That's full. It's it's not, I, I think it's changing, okay? I, I know people that, I think there's a lot more houses for sale, and I think a month from now, there's gonna be even more. Partially resulting from the prospect of blistering mm -hmm. repayment terms for anyone considering to move. Then there's a problem with institutional buyers who are almost certain to pounce on ownerships and demographic change as the baby boom generation prepares to leave their homes over the next decade or two. So, so they're basically saying that, okay, baby boomers are going to retire and downsize or go to a condo mm -hmm. or move to Arizona or Florida, wherever, that companies are going to come in and buy the homes? It's a possibility. There's already been companies out there doing this for decades, so it's... And they own I know we did a, hundreds of thousands of homes. I know we did a video, you know, saying, hey, we're going to become a society of renters right, yeah. and I stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know we also did a, a, a video about that the government was talking about, Congress was talking about, hey, stopping these companies from right. owning so many homes mm -hmm. and making them, either tax them really heavy for owning them, right. or they're gonna have to start selling them so people have a chance to buy them. What's your opinion on if you think that's gonna happen? That Total speculation. No data, no science, just my brain says, oh, well, now they're gonna say inventory's rising. So look, we don't have to, this can go away now it'll just fade off into the sunset and everything will go back to the way it was. Right, because everybody was saying, oh, they're gonna come in and that's why inventory sh uh, is low, inventory is low. That's why, you know, people can't buy homes. That's why prices are up. But now there's tons of inventory. I know some areas there's tons of inventory and they're still not selling. I admit I was wrong because for months I was saying, hey, homes aren't selling because of lack of inventory. Now I got egg on my face because there's tons of, I don't think you have egg on your face. But in certain areas, there's tons of inventory and and nobody's buying. But again, at the same time, it's because of insurance in some areas. And I did mention that you yeah, know, six mean, months ago. 
Right. That's what I mean. I don't think I think you're harsh. Just egg on your face. You, if you're on the coast, everything is slowed down. If you're condo, if you're looping in condos, condos are down to an absorption rate from like 147 down to 27 percent. Mm -hmm. Meaning, they're just the higher the number, the faster they move. The lower the number, the slower they move. So. There's a lot of stuff that's changed, including interest rates and insurance is really killing us, particularly here in Florida. Right. It's it's insane right now. That's why we said, you know, uh, the Southwest Florida, you know, I I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think Cape Coral, they said that the average was 80 homes on the market. And now there's over 800. And those people, wow. it's, it's not because of, it's because of insurance. Right. And never really recovered from the hurricane from a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just insurance and people are saying that it was on the news it's just saying nobody can afford the insurance rates right I, I just think that with our inventory yes we have more inventory because so in some of the areas in our general area here in the tampa bay area um we have surpassed where we were historically pre-pandemic on days on market so the days on market are getting significantly longer and that's what's really adding and contributing to our increased inventory and the amount of buyers coming onto the market because of the affordability has also added to inventory staying on the market longer because there's not as many buyers. But the second those interest rates come down just a little, like I said, like flood. I said it's in the artificial. last video, if interest rates hit double digits, say hypothetically they hit 10 percent, game over, close our doors, nobody's selling nothing, nobody's buying nothing, yeah. end the story, home inspection is over with. But say it goes the other way, and say rates go to five. Five and, and a half, half, six. I think a lot of people will, will wake up. And I think a lot of the young people are going to realize that waiting sometimes it's not, you know, waiting for low rates. That's when everybody's going to be waiting for it. Right. So, so you're jumping into the market at the same time everybody else is, which is driving up the price. Up the price of the house. So that's why it's sitting down and having a consultation is really really important but if you look at like what new construction is doing right now they're bringing the rates down because they study these things they spend they have the budget to study this they know where people are going to react and move mm -hmm. with concessions and interest rates they don't buy them down as much as they were but they know the sweet spot and they they're starting to bring them down so at six percent that seems to be right around the you know the 5.99 is one of the quotes oh, yeah. that we got because it's a five so it's like, it's psychological. Better. Yeah. And then people come in the door and they started buying. But last on the inventory, just remember, there's still a lot. When we look at how many houses there are to people, we are still grossly, grossly underhoused. And that's the problem. Yeah, that's true. All right. Those who are around 36 years of age, Mark, aren't likely to benefit much from the generational handover. For, but those in Generation Z may re... What does it say? Reap some of the rewards. Reap some of the rewards. Yeah. It's windy out here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's windy. Like it's hard to read the paper. In the truth, the outlook is bleak, but this doesn't mean that, that there's no hope for younger buyers aspiring to one day take a hold of their own property and put this, their stamp on it. The first step towards achieving this goal, especially a big one like buying a home, is this hostile marketplace involves gaining essential knowledge. It is. And that's what we try to do here. Yep on uh, you know on this channel we try we're realistic bill sells houses i inspect houses believe me we want everybody buying houses right but we're just being realistic with you guys you know if it's not the right time it's not the right time it, it's just it's just the way things are and like this this 36 i would love to see where this 36 year old is the average that's to me is just i i would have never thought that no i, I wouldn't have thought like that, that either that was not where i was at because it's like I don't know. It's just different. I, it's, I mean, times are changing. I'd love to see the numbers on that and dig into it a little bit more. But, you know, that being said, it's like patience is important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you get through school, figure out what you're going to do, you start saving up things. People live at home. That was kind of typically how we did it, you know, when we were coming up. Yeah. You know, and it seems like everything's the same. You just have to save a lot longer because, you know, prices have gone up so much and wages aren't The, the good up. news is, like I was saying even on the last video, that Zillow predicted my area is going to go up 3.5, and then yep. a week later they said 2.5. <laughs> now I just got an uh, email from them. Now they said predicting 0.5 percent yeah. increase over. So maybe that's going to go negative, and maybe prices will drop. So at least you're not fighting that inflation thing, because what was happening during the peak is people were saving money, 
couldn't save fast enough. But they couldn't save fast enough yeah. because the price of the homes were increasing faster right. than they could save. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough, you know, because wages are slowly but surely trying to uh, creep back up there. Um, so the first, the article goes on to say the first thing to keep in mind when worrying about current and future housing woes is you aren't alone. Today, around half of all Americans between the ages of 18 and 29 live with their parents. These are the years prime for going away to college and considering a career by other means after finishing up some of the formative years, you know, high school and such. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are many problems floating around in the undercut of modern social and economic structure that contribute to this reality. It's I'm true. young, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, I left my house when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, they have to these days. Yeah, and I understand. I think it's a good idea to stay at home as long as you can. Sorry, parents. But it's, you know, it's just reality. You get off on the right foot. But while you're at home, you have to save up money. You have to. You can't just go out and party and have a good time. And, and I say this because I had some clients that I've known since they were born. And now they're in their very early 20s. And they just bought their first brand new house. Mm -hmm. Not new to them, new to everybody. It was mm -hmm. just built. It was in the median price point where everything is right now in the 400s. And they were able to save up their money. But they worked their rears off. So it can be done with the sacrifice. So it's not out of reach. That's the point. Right. It's tough. Don't get me wrong, but it's not out of reach. It's easy for us to be negative and just say, don't do it. You'll never yeah. happen and all that stuff. I but can't do that. It's just, but it's, but it, it's realistically, yeah, it's doable. So the article continues on to say, for one, financial experts are unified in calling for mandatory financial literacy education during the fundamental years. High school graduates simply aren't prepared for the rigors of uh, fiscal adult life, and living at home doesn't provide the full benefits of real world versus classroom I agree experience. with that one hundred percent. I agree with that. I think people yeah. in high school should take a course of how to have a checking account. I mean, do people still have checking account? <laughs> yes. Okay. How to, how to it have used to be in school. I didn't. Not in my school. It was in my school. The basics on how to pay bills and the basic how to write card. a check, how to balance your checkbook, credit was, cards, credit cards. Our... Yeah, we had home economics. They taught you how to cook a little bit of this, cook a little bit. I didn't go to a fancy school. Well, I went. You know, I had I went home to a home ec. I had a public education just like everybody else here in this county. But we used to have that portion in our class of how to write a check, how to balance your checkbook, how to save money, compounding interest simple versus complex it's just it, it, why they did away with some of this stuff i just don't understand the lack of mobility affects would-be home buyers in other systemic ways too people living at home may be less likely to date or spend time socially okay in 2020 the average age for first marriages was 28.1 for women and 30 for men up notably from past years Financial weakness may be a motivating factor or a side issue here, but the reality is that young people are even less capable of purchasing a home for themselves when they're doing it alone rather than with a life partner. That's true. I mean, that goes... Well, so basically, I got married at 24. I don't know how old I was when I had the first kid, but it was not that long afterwards, so they're still just having a good time. Yeah. Could be smart. <laughs> yeah, but apparently they're not going out on dates. They're just sitting at home. Oh. I don't know. But it did say 2020, so that was kind of during the pandemic, and people weren't really going out anyway. So I don't mm -hmm. know. We'll see. But this is where you have to kind of look at some of these uh, statistics and, you know, tell us what your opinions are on them. Salary shifts haven't translated translated into real estate buying power. Okay, The job market has seamlessly become ice cold as well. I mean... Has it become ice cold? I don't know about that. Many highly motivated, well-educated job seekers are facing a down of gauntlet of difficulties. Ghost shops, hiring freezes among corporations that once stood as employment magnets in their communities, along with salary packages destined to demand a side hustle to make ends meet, all combined to deliver menacing economic insecurity for today's youth. That I kind of agree with. Yeah. Because the there's jobs out there, but 
it's are they jobs that you want to do or up to the like you right. studied to be x is there a job for that and i know okay i know the unemployment numbers are still good but that's people getting part-time jobs people right you know not joining the workforce anymore but getting out of the workforce and that's government jobs so the government's like hey you know what we we need to lower this unemployment number you know employment number let's just hire a bunch of people for the government it really doesn't produce anything mm -hmm. but we need somebody to count these staples or something <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean yeah they shouldn't count government jobs right i mean i get it, it and at the same token i mean i don't know how they would do it but you know when you're counting people who get a second job or a third job yeah they, they count they're counting it one person three times yeah so they're counting people like okay i can't make ends meet so i'm gonna go get a part-time job doing this a part-time job doing that now you got one person saying hey there's three more jobs right i think that's the way it's done but it's it's not know. it's not right all right even for those prioritized savings for their first home middling salaries figure combined figures combined with price inflation across the board makes the down payment savings figure a big ask which we've talked about mm -hmm. and that's true we need the market to level a little bit for a while uh, it would take a first time home buyer almost eight years to build up a 20 percent down payment figure on the median salary and target home price that's a long time that's a really long time but that's kind of i can kind of see that i think that's a pretty accurate statement yeah, just to be honest, it just, yeah, but if you're looking at how much it costs for everything else right now and what we spend, if you had to save up 20%, you know, so that's extra money that you're making. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming like we're just, that's just off your salary of one job. How long would that take? That would be pretty tough. Yeah, and pay all your bills at the and same time. And pay your time. bills, yeah, everything else, eat and all that. So the full 20% isn't strictly necessary any longer. One of many home buying myths that still prevail in the zeitgeist but achieving this 20% will save you from paying PMI, the bank's insurance on your loan. And that's true. Yeah. So if you're doing PMI. Private mortgage insurance. Which is, yeah, which is private mortgage insurance. Once you hit 20%, you can send the letter in and they'll stop charging you the 20% mm -hmm. on your mortgage. Now, if you're doing MIP, which is on FHA loans, you're only saving up 3% to put down, but you're stuck with that MIP throughout the life of the loan, but you can refinance it and then turn it into a conventional with hopefully a better interest rate when that it's comes It's better around. to have the 20% down. Yep, just get. <laughs> so let's even skip that part yep. and say starter homes no longer feature a starter price. Like basically starter homes don't exist anymore. What do you think of that one? I think that one is going to be one of those that's very, very geographically driven. Sure. I think I can't just make a blanket statement in good conscience to say starter homes don't exist. Here's why. A starter home here, yeah. where we're at, Tarpon, yeah. Pinellas County, mm -hmm. and a starter home in Zephyr Hills. Mm -hmm. Which is about an hour from here. It's about an hour still have malls all the other stuff yada 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 but we're on the water here but we're on the water prices are a lot higher mm -hmm. so trying to start your house here but wages are relatively the same right across the board because it's bigger industry hospitals they all pay roughly the same just because i've looked at numbers like that so it's it would be kind of tough let's see what they say another trouble spot in the housing market for future generations to deal can be found in a typical home the annual income required to afford a home priced at medium figures rode, rose in the highest figure yet in August 2023, arriving at 114627 So basically, in August 23, you need to make 114000 mm -hmm. to qualify, you know, to get a mortgage. Right. Qualifying a standard home in 2020 was just 49680 So think about it. In 2020, it was 49,680. In 2023, it was 114,627. Yeah, you look up like 58%. It's huge. I won't even bother reading the rest because we already know what it's going to say. Right. Yeah, it's 114 up from 49,6. Because of interest rates and everything. Right, because of the affordability. Most of it's going to go to, most of your payment really goes to interest. So uh, let's answer the question. 
your opinion and my opinion. Will future generations ever be able to afford a home? 100% yes. I agree. I think it's going to be tough for a little while. Yep. Um, but I think it's going to be, you're going to have to save. And I think that there's going to be a, have to be a lot more inventory in the market mm -hmm. because supply and demand. Yep. And I think that we're going to get into a buyer's market pretty soon, in my opinion. Don't know if I agree with that one. Um, I think we'll, by the number of homes that come on, so we talk about months of inventory, right? So, Coming to a six. So when do you think it's going to become a buyer's market? I don't think we're even close. I think we're, this is why I'm saying we don't have enough data yet to find out where we're truly at, right? Because houses are staying on the market longer. And to be honest, sellers, sometimes you have to start reeling it in a little bit. You are not getting the price that you tried for two years ago or a year ago. But if you go into some markets, I'm talking about local, local, hyper local. Yeah. Okay. Hudson, the canals. There used to be eight average, now there's 84. But now you have a different issue affecting those, which that's is gonna be insurance. insurance. But that's a buyer's market now. Right, micro, that's a very micro market that's into a buyer's market. That's why, you know, we've talked about it time and time again. You, it's, you can't just make a blanket statement. Now, if you look at the national average, where we're at, you know, we're at what, 3.6 or 3.7 months of inventory nationally. But then if you come here, you go to Hudson, as an example, mm -hmm. if you want to go, we're in a market of buyers at six months, there's six months roughly of inventory. Right. You go to Tarpon Springs, there's 4.2-ish months, give or take, depending on how you cut up you know, the city to the two zip codes. It just depends on where you go. You know, if you take one zip code, one zip code's got a lot more inventory than the other zip code because one's on the water and one's not. So you guys tell us, Okay, especially the younger people. Do you guys think you could afford to buy a house now? Or do you even want to buy a house? I guess that's the question. Yeah, or do you ever really want to own a house? And I think they can get there. But don't forget. Savement, savings and sacrifice. Yeah, but a lot of people are still four out of five are saying it's a bad time to buy. Is that how you guys feel too? Comment below. That's today's video. You have anything to add? Nope. Just Put your nose to the grindstone and keep working. And watch this next video because I think you'll be very interested in this next video. And we will talk to you in the next one. And remember, do me a favor, consider subscribing. Thank you and have a great day. See you on the next one. Bye. But you should be working, not watching our videos. No, watch the videos. Okay, yeah, watch our videos. Come on. <laughs>